joining us for the webinar entitled Emerging Trends in the Field of Solar Cell Fabrication. Uh, we are extremely glad to have Dr. Tehseen Amin Khan Kasuria with us, uh, who is a professor at Kulam Akhtar Khan Institute of Engineering, Sciences and Technology. He has done his MS and PhD in Electronics Engineering, also from UK. His research areas uh, interests lie in the field of organic semiconductors, sensors, photovoltaics, and telemetry system applications. He has over 21 journals and conference publications. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us today. Before we begin, all our participants are requested to keep your mics and videos turned off during the entire session. We will have a question and answer session at the end at which you can raise your hand and the host will give you the opportunity to ask your question. You can also send any questions or messages to the host through the chat with your name and affiliation at the end. Please be attentive during the session as there will be short and easy quiz at the end which will be sent to you through email along with the recording of the webinar. You will have 24 hours to attempt the quiz in order to be eligible for the certificate. The certificate will also be emailed to you within one week from today onwards. Now, without further ado, we'd like to hand over the controls to our most esteemed speaker today, Dr. Engineer Dr. Tenkin and Ms. Khan. Sir, the control is there. Thank you, Fabia. Uh, first of all, I'm very thankful to the uh, PAF Kite uh, IEEE student chapter. Uh, that they invited me to uh, share my views and thoughts about the solar cell fabrication technology. Uh, the title of my presentation uh, is uh, Emerging Trends in the Fields of Solar Cell Fabrication Technology. Um, it's a very interesting topic nowadays. Uh, everyone is talking about the solar cell uh, photovoltaics and uh, um, everyone wants to get rid of this uh, great technology because uh, as you all know that we are facing uh, this uh, load shedding problem. So uh, photovoltaics is the possible option or possible solution for this uh, problem. So that's why a um, lot of people are interested in the photovoltaics. So uh, let's start. But uh, uh, before uh, going to start my presentation, uh, I would like to tell you about uh, my faculty. Uh, Fabia gave a very brief introduction of myself, but uh, I want to tell you about the uh, about my faculty. Uh, the faculty where currently I am serving uh, is the faculty of engineering sciences. So uh, for some of you, it might be of, uh, you might not have heard of this uh, engineering sciences faculty, but uh, uh, let me explain to you that uh, engineering sciences, as you, uh, uh, you can um, uh, see from the, you can uh, guess from this, that it is the uh, uh, combination of engineering and sciences means that uh, we all know that engineering uh, degrees are much more professional and uh, they, they are focusing on the applications of the uh, application of the technology but uh, here in engineering sciences uh, and in sciences mostly we uh, deal with the uh, theories and uh, different uh, laws of the nature. So in engineering sciences, actually we are combining these two and uh, we are uh, providing the knowledge uh, of the application plus the sciences means that by this way you, uh, you would become uh, a one step further means that you can uh, uh, contribute towards the development or towards the invention of new or disciplines or towards the uh, to you can find the different applications different new applications of the any engineering discipline but here in engineering it's a very vast uh, um, 
engineering discipline. We are uh, currently in uh, at GIK Institute. Uh, we are focusing on we are offering three different streams: uh, semiconductor and microelectronics, and uh, photonics and modeling and simulation. If we talk about the semiconductor and microelectronics, it's actually the combination as uh, engineering sciences means that you you have a diverse nature of the different uh, uh, disciplines means uh, in engineering sciences you have the touch of uh, uh, electronics in engineering you have the knowledge of computer science you have the knowledge of uh, uh, material uh, engineering you have the knowledge of mechanical engineering you have the knowledge of computer science engineering so uh, keeping in mind all these disciplines because currently uh, at GIK Institute we are offering all these uh, um, we are offering the engineering program in all these disciplines so then why there is a need of engineering engineering sciences so in engineering sciences if you ask to some um, electronics engineer uh, uh, um, to, you ask him to fabricate us a mobile and uh, he can only uh, design the electronics part of the uh, uh, parts of, part of the mobile uh, he cannot contribute or he cannot give you some uh, expert or some uh, logical solution to the from the materials point of view and because electronics is what electronics is basically the uh, uh, um, because uh, if we from the application we talk about everyone wants to be uh, make his mobile as lighter as possible as advanced as possible everyone want to have the latest games everyone want to have the latest software everyone w want to have the uh, uh, very good RAM uh, everyone want the uh, very good speed of internet so how we can match up all these requirements so only the electronic engineers uh, cannot contribute to all these uh, cannot cater all these parameters and uh, <clears throat> uh, let's suppose if someone hires the semiconductor and microelectronics engineer then what would be the difference between the engineering sciences student and the rest of the engineers for example electronics engineer or a materials engineer so electronics engineer can only contribute to the electronic part of the mobile material engineer can only contribute to the materials part of the mobile and the cs uh, computer science engineer a computer engineer can only contribute to the software problem uh, and similarly if we uh, add some um, mechanical part for example gyroscope or accelerometer into that only um, mechanical engineer co only contribute to only that uh, part but if the company hires the engineering science students for example if the student has uh, has the done his uh, engineering sciences degree in semiconductor and microelectronics then he would be able to contribute to the uh, not only to the electronics part but in this stream he will get the uh, knowledge of uh, material engineering so by this way he can also propose the solutions out that what kind of material uh, he can propose the solution that what kind of material is used to make a um, mobile to make it more lighter more uh, sophisticated uh, so by this way uh, that is why we call engineering sciences as a multidisciplinary program uh, in another stream we are offering the photonics which mostly cover electronics plus uh, telecom part of the uh, engineering di disciplines in modeling and simulation we cover uh, is another diverse uh, nature of the engi uh, engineering stream of the engineering sciences program and uh, here modeling and simulation nowadays we can apply this uh, modeling and simulation. obviously nothing is uh, uh, no process can be implemented without the modeling or without the simulation so they can contribute into 
uh, CS program or they can contribute to even to mechanical engineering. So that is why uh, we say that engineering sciences is a multidisciplinary program. I hope so you have got the idea that what is engineering sciences and uh, you would recommend it to your brother or sisters and to your relatives and to your friends. So this was the brief introduction of uh, my faculty. So let's start with the presentation. The plot of my presentation includes uh, an overview of the photovoltaic system. Uh, here, uh, actually I have, because I know that uh, IEEE student chapter is organizing uh, this uh, webinar. So mostly the I'm expecting and I was guided that uh, uh, most of the undergrad students are the audience of this webinar. So I kept this presentation a very introductory type so that after uh, uh, attending this webinar, you would be able to uh, understand that what is the photovoltaic technology and what is happening in Pakistan. So we are, we, uh, what uh, in Pakistan, how we can implement it or what kind of research work uh, we can do here in Pakistan and what the international people are doing uh, in this area. So in a nutshell, I will try to brief all these aspects of the photovoltaic technology. Uh, we will also do uh, discuss the fabrication technologies uh, briefly. Um, there are the different uh, generations of solar cells are, are now in the market are available, first generation, second generation. And we also discuss about those generations and what are their methods, how we can fabricate, what is the difference between those these generations of the solar cells and what are the upcoming technologies and where uh, people want, uh, uh, where people I think, uh, yes, I just continue. Um, and uh, at the end, we will discuss about the applications of the solar cells, uh, that what are its future applications, how we, we can use the solar cells in a different uh, uh, aspects, uh, how we can um, use it in our rooms, not only uh, at the at our rooftops or some land area, but inside the building or inside the our rooms, we can use uh, these solar cells. So uh, this will we will discuss in the future applications of solar cells. Um, first, I would like to give you a, an overview of the photovoltaic system. Um, it uh, includes three different parts. Uh, now, one is the fabrication of the solar cell. Uh, fabrication of the solar cell is an area where uh, um, people can contribute to fo focus about the uh, design or fabrication of the solar cell. Uh, next part is the inverter design. In inverter design, we usually, because uh, we uh, being an electronics or electrical engineer, uh, in, we know that inverter is a device which converts the AC into or DC voltage or vice versa. So inverter, and we know that from photovoltaics we are getting the DC uh, voltages. So we need to convert the equipment we are using in at our homes or the AC, and they usually operate at 220 volt. So how to convert that DC voltage into AC and how we can, in, uh, design an, invert, an efficient inverter, which can uh, minimize its uh, conversion time and uh, 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 we can uh, convert our time as well as the power losses uh, of the system. So some people are focusing in this area, inverter design. And uh, next part is the power transmission system. Uh, power transmission system, um, you, uh, we can also, you can also call it uh, a wiring that uh, 
how to we can extract the power from the photovoltaic systems how we can transmit it from one end to another so all these power related uh, matters is uh, uh, power distribution matters can be related in this part and people are focusing in this area so these are the three different uh, uh, parts of the photovoltaic system so um, different uh, people uh, according to their choice they select the area and then they start contributing or start uh, making a research in that area so my area is the fabrication of the solar cell my research area is the fabrication of the solar cells and uh, uh, here uh, and uh, in this webinar i also uh, i will also explain to you how we can fabricate those solar cells uh, and its different technologies uh, uh, remaining to or the different uh, streams and different focused areas uh, we will not go into detail of that uh, on these two areas inverter design and the power transmission um, so this is the brief uh, uh, introduction of the photovoltaic system so uh, solar cell fabrication technologies solar cell fabrication technologies uh, uh, are categorized into three different uh, parts uh, first one is the silicon technology which is also called the first generation solar cells and uh, as you can see in this picture uh, uh, that uh, um, the solar cells you, you have seen quite oftenly at your rooftops or at many other places um, this chiasm solar power plants is also built built on this technology silicon technology and they are usually called the first generation solar cells and their process of uh, making uh, is the lithography okay uh, the second generation solar cell is the uh, thin film technology and the, its process or the thin film technology okay uh, Thin film uh, uh, technology is usually called, as you can see, these are the uh, solar cells uh, uh, built on a very flexible state and uh, they uh, use the thin film deposition techniques. So that is why they are called the second generation solar cells. Uh, first one is the built on the silicon that is, uh, and then we improved and uh, 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 make the solar cells on a, uh, some flexible substrates or we can at least we can say okay, we can bend it dry or like this these are called the uh, thin film technology and the third generation is the organic semiconductor technology uh, in a lot of presentation I also heard about the uh, people usually uh, may denounce third and fourth and even fifth generation of the solar cells in which uh, they mentioned that uh, um, this is a fourth generation of uh, solar cell and this is a fifth generation of solar cells but uh, probably they also included they can be included into the organic semiconductor uh, technology because their way of uh, fabricating those solar cells are the same and they are uh, the process of making those solar cells is a hybrid plus new some new other techniques uh, which are quite recently developed uh, later we will discuss about those techniques so in my uh, view uh, I can say that the basically we have these three basic technologies because uh, when we use the board and uh, maybe it's uh, you may call it out common mistake your general mistake that where people are uh, denouncing fourth generation and fifth generation of the solar cells but uh, in my view what i can say that uh, only generation can we can call a generation of the solar cells when those cells are available in the market and the people are using it and then it becomes saturated and then some other new technique come um, only then we can say okay this is the first generation now this is the second generation and 
this is the next generation. But uh, the rest of the generation, where uh, if you heard the fourth generation or fifth generation, but those are all can be included into these uh, organic semiconductor solar cells, uh, or they are the combination of the this uh, third generation uh, process. Um, so, uh, in my view, these are the three basic uh, solar cell fabrication techniques or technology, uh, which are which is, uh, which we categorize them as a first generation, second generation, or uh, and the third generation solar cells. Um, people are some people are asking question in quiz. Okay. Um, if I go, so we start with the first generation solar cells. As we mentioned earlier, that uh, first generation solar cells are based on the silicon technology. So silicon technology is the process uh, of making solar cells based on the silicon. Silicon is a material which we quite often use for uh, making the electronic components and different devices. Um, the uh, process of making uh, the silicon technology based on four different steps. Lithography. Uh, lithography is the process of uh, depositing uh, or is the process of making patterns. Uh, then it uh, includes etching. Etching means to remove something. Then doping. Uh, doping means uh, obviously if you are you are an electronic engineer, you can easily understand that what is doping means that uh, silicon is itself is a uh, insulator, and when we dope it with boron or with phosphorus, it becomes P-type and and type semiconductor and semiconductor are the materials which, uh, which we uh, conduct only in one direction that is why they are called semiconductor or their conductivity level is between the conductors and the insulators so that is why they are called semiconductor so um, and the next step is the deposition deposition means uh, 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 deposition means to deposit something and uh, usually in terms of uh, uh, solar cell fabrication or in, uh, and let me tell you uh, one more point over it. Um, as we, uh, we all know that uh, uh, solar cells are made up of silicon and those solar cells are the combination of P and N junction, okay? So deposition is the kind of uh, uh, material deposition or some metal deposition when we uh, we have fabricated uh, one solar cells and we want to connect it to the external world then obviously we need some uh, metallization or some contact uh, making process so that is done in deposition process now and uh, let me briefly briefly explain to you about the Solar cell that these solar cell uh, silicon technology solar cell is basically a PN junction like a diode, okay? But it's a, a diode which generates energy, which generates power. So um, if I uh, uh, simple diode, if I uh, explain to you or let. Uh, these, if we have the four quadrants, uh, let me <coughs> I think uh, my mics would cover this much up. Yeah, I hope so you can see me now. Hello, everyone. Uh, basically, we have the four quadrants, okay? We have the four quadrants, and in those four quadrants, when now uh, we have this much of here we have the diode okay and if uh, we are using this much of this quadrant of the graph here it acts as a photodiode 
and if we are using this much of this quadrant of the graph so here it acts as a photovoltaic cell okay so these are the different quadrants where uh, a pn junction can operate differently or it can be uh, uh, it can work Can you see uh, what I have written on the, this whiteboard? I hope so. You can see this thing. So, uh, if the uh, we are using the four quadrant of the graph, then it is called a photovoltaic cell. So, in the fourth quadrant, that PN junction operates. If the PN junction operates in the fourth quadrant, then it becomes a solar cell. And if it is operating in the third quadrant, then it is a photodiode. And if it is in the uh, first quadrant, then it is a simple diode. And we know the properties of the diode uh, that it conducts only in one direction, amplification, rectifications, and switching. These are the three basic applications of the diode. Um, okay, so, um, and uh, PN junctions, how to make that PN junctions, we uh, obviously we don't have such kind of mechanism uh, where we can say that, uh, okay, uh, I have the P type material and I have the N type material and I combine together and here it becomes a PN junction. No, it, it doesn't like that. But uh, usually, uh, what we need to do, uh, uh, we need to do that uh, we have the, uh, on a silicon, we covered some part of the silicon and then we deposit P-type material, dope that part of the silicon as a P-type material and then we cover that area and deposit on the other side, we deposit the N-type uh, phosphorus atoms into that. So by this way, that area becomes N-type material. So by this way, we can say that this is a PN junctions and we don't have such mechanism where we connect uh, two separately uh, fabricated uh, P and N type and we don't have such mechanism that we combine together those P and N type material and we can we call it as a diode. This is not the way. So uh, usually to fabricate PN junctions and uh, let me tell you there, this whole, uh, uh, process this whole silicon technology is basically the uh, which I am explaining to you that uh, this whole process is the way uh, you make your devices your ICs your uh, uh, processors your microcontrollers this is the whole all those uh, devices are made through this uh, technology and the same similar technology can be used to fabricate the solar cells because we know that uh, all those devices which are the um, here if I give you uh, a brief uh, um, that uh, how these ICs in ICs we follow different kinds of uh, logic structures um, different ICs family DTL logic TTL logic ECL logic so these are the different uh, uh, logic uh, families, um, um, but all those uh, ICs, all those circuits, all those microcontrollers, all those uh, my, uh, these processors of your PCs can be made through this process. The process will remain the same, okay? And uh, obviously, uh, uh, and the, um, here I would like to explain the one most important point that uh, whatever I'm explaining to you this is uh, uh, let me tell you that what we have here in GIK or what we have we can fabricate uh, what technology we have uh, in GIK or in Pakistan so I will also try to cover from this point of view that what kind of uh, work we can do over here 
uh, so that you have a better understanding that okay, okay, yes, this kind of work can be done over here, or uh, at least um, um, I am serving at GIK Institute. So from GIK point of view, I can I can uh, tell you that we have this lithography setup, we have this etching, uh, we don't have this doping mechanism, but we have the deposition. So these three parts we have at GIK Institute. So um, so from this point of view, I can um, uh, tell you that uh, most of this, and among all these points, lithography is the most important point. So here at GIK, we have these three parts. We can perform these three parts, but doping is, is, uh, is still here. It is not, this process cannot be performed at GIK. But rest of the things we can do at, here at GIK Institute. And I will explain to you that uh, what kind of work we can uh, do uh, here at GIK Institute. So uh, now I would like to uh, give a brief uh, introduction of this lithography process that what uh, kind of, uh, how this profit can, uh, process can be done and uh, the main reason is that we have this uh, equipment, we have this technology, this lithography process. Uh, we can perform fully functional lab at GA against you. And uh, um, we, we, one of the, uh, if I share with you guys that one of my uh, objectives or one of my future goals or to make those or uh, to make a IC or to make a simple diode on which we can write this this is made in Pakistan so this is one of my perspective in and inshallah one day we will achieve this thing so uh, we are trying to improve as I told you that we have the three different uh, these uh, uh, and this deposition, we have the lithography, we have the etching, but we uh, still we are missing out, out of this doping process. So, inshallah, one day we will also we will also be able to get this doping set up over here. And uh, uh, so, and um, lithography actually is the process of transferring patterns. So how we can define lithography? Lithography is the process of transferring patterns. And uh, as I told you that uh, the way you want to make your IC is the, uh, this thing can be uh, decided by that lithography process because it gives you the window where you want to perform some specific task. Although lithography is one of the oldest uh, technique, uh, it is even uh, before Christ people were uh, uh, start uh, making these lithography. Actually lithography is the combination of two words. Litho means stone and graphy means pattern. These are the two Latin words. Litho means stone and graphy means patterns. So lithography so means that uh, patterning on a stone. So as you can see in the picture, so here person is may has made some uh, picture on the stone and then he's uh, uh, war uh, uh, varnishing that stone to bring shine into that. So this kind of process is also called a lithography. And here in photovoltaics or in electronic industry, we are also uh, do the same. We make uh, uh, electronic patterns on the silicon stone. So that is why this process is called a lithography process. And lithography process is the combination of four different steps, which are the exposure, masking, photoresist, and development. So these are the four, to, four different steps involved in the lithography process. Um, um, so, okay. 
um, among these uh, these if we talk about the exposure exposure is the process of uh, um, may uh, uh, that how we exposed uh, our sample with different uh, uh, with different uh, exposure mechanisms so with different color of light actually in lithography we use the ultraviolet light and uh, if we talk about the types of lithography then it includes photolithography electron beam lithography x-ray lithography and uh, the ion beam lithography so the exposure is the way of uh, uh, is the way of um, uh, exposing your silicon wafer to the different uh, expo uh, expo uh, different source of lights so here we uh, we have the this uh, ultraviolet source and the type of lithography which we have at GI Institute, uh, Institute it uses the ultraviolet light we have this source so and the way we expose are the contact printing and pro proximity printing contact printing is the um, way of exposing where the mask and the uh, silicon wafer usually we call the slip the silicon wafer as the substrate so contact printing um, mm, in contact printing wafer and the substrate wafer and the substrate uh, are in direct contact uh, with the or, or with each other okay wafer and the substrate um, substrate means uh, uh, wafer and the mask are in direct contact while in proximity printing they are separated this will I will explain it and masking is the uh, uh, depends on two different type of masks are available mask will name itself represents that uh, we have it provides you that uh, it covers something mask so when we are exposing through sunlight mask works it do it gives you the shadow or it protects some area area where that light cannot be fall okay and photoresist is the light sensitive material uh, uh, light sensitive material uh, it is uh, a combination of two types of photoresist are available positive photoresist negative photoresist and uh, they have their own properties uh, and then we have the development process uh, development process may uh, include uh, how we can um, uh, they, uh, when this photoresist are exposed to light one area become hard and another area becomes soft so when we put into a developer solutions so soft area gets removed and the hard area still remains there so by this way the way we have explained that what is lithography is lithography is the process of transferring patterns so by this way we transfer our pattern to the silicon substrate okay um, before discussing the lithographic process um, we must uh, make sure that we should have this clue clean room and at GA Institute we have this clean room and clean how we define what is a clean room although my office is very clean but we cannot call it a clean room or your classrooms are supposed to be very clean but they are not actually the clean room and how we define what is a clean room clean room is a room where dust particles per square foot are very tightly controlled so by this way uh, if we are calling that uh, we I have a class 10 clean room so it means that there are 10 dust particles per square foot of that rooms exist 
so uh, and if i say that i have a class 100 clean room it means like 100 uh, uh, dust particles per square uh, area of that rooms or, uh, will exist so this is how we define the clean room with respect to their dust particle counts so class 10 clean room means 10 uh, dust particles per square foot and class 100 means is similarly and here at the AKS Institute we have the class uh, 100 clean room where 100 particles per square foot uh, exist so we which is a very good uh, uh, clean room uh, environment so and usually for a very if it uh, device fabrication usually we require to have a class 10 clean room for very special purpose so or for the fabrication of like uh, if you call uh, say that microprocessor or something like that so those can be uh, fabricated in a class 10 clean room where 10 particles per square foot uh, exist so uh, and why we uh, need to have those clean rooms why there is a requirement of such a, a high uh, purity level or how high uh, uh, cleaning standard are required to deposit those devices because uh, we are to fabricate uh, an ic you, we usually we are dealing at the micro scale level so at the micro scale level, if some dust particle come and, and deposit between on, on your device, then it may short circuit or uh, it can destroy your whole device. So that is why uh, clean rooms are very important to fabricate uh, whether you, uh, to the integrated circuits, ICs. But uh, obviously in uh, silicon solar cell technology, it is uh, not that uh, uh, very important that we should have a clean room or like this, but obviously uh, for this uh, lithographic process, so we usually we have the this uh, uh, clean room requirement. So, uh, and how these dust particles can create the problems. Uh, here, uh, two points are written. One is the crystal growth. So crystal growth and second is the device fabrication. So uh, dust particles can be added to the, uh, at two stages of the uh, device fabrication. During the crystal growth, when we are uh, fabricating or synthesizing our crystal, and second is the device fabrication. Uh, if it adds during the crystal growth, it causes causes dislocations. Right? Uh, it causes dislocations, and uh, those dislocations or some interstitial impurities or um, vacancies can be also be considered as a uh, defect so those interstitial impurities actually disturb your uh, crystal uh, growth properties because uh, for the device fabrication usually we required a very high level of uh, purity so usually we require nine ninety nine point nine ends this level of purity we require 99.9 and .9 means 99.999 level and this is called the device graded silicon so if some impurity added to that it actually defects uh, creates the defects in the lattice structure and what a uh, lattice structure is the periodic arrangement of atoms so it disturbs that uh, periodic arrangement of the atoms and uh, uh, which ultimately degrades your device performance. So uh, that is why uh, we require the clean room during the crystal uh, growth process. Second is the device fabrication. During device fabrication, uh, we also require the clean clean room. And uh, if some dust particles added to the gate oxide, 
uh, it can increase the uh, conductivity of, of that oxide layer um, if it is uh, on another side it cause constriction to the flow of current means it opposes the that flow of current and if it is between the two line structures it cause the short circuiting of the current uh, if I draw uh, like this uh, uh, if I show you let's suppose we have this structure okay and if the dust particles are bit over here this is a dust particle okay if this is the dust particle then it causes constriction to the flow of current flow of current and if it is over here it short circuit the it short circuit the two different uh, line of path and if it is over here then it call it increases the gate oxide gate oxide it increases the conductivity of that oxide layer okay so these are the different uh, uh, locations of the uh, dust particles where they can uh, cause different kinds of problems next is the exposure method okay um, I hope this is 749 I think we should make it uh, a bit the exposure methods are the um, how we exposed our silicon wafers with respect to different so sources of light as I told you earlier that we have the ultraviolet light source we have the x-ray source we have the electron beam source we have the ion beam source and uh, um, different exposure mechanism shadow printing and projection printing this is a shadow printing shadow printing means uh, as it is recreated the shadow of that light on the silicon wafer and in projection printing we have we uh, magnify the projection uh, magnify the shadow of the mask onto the silicon wafer we make it a bigger or smaller as per our desire uh, we can project the shadow onto the silicon wafer. There are two different uh, techniques. Okay. Uh, yeah, projection printing further have two different types. Uh, 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 wafer scan and roster scan. Okay, wafer scan and uh, roster scan and uh, shadow printing also have have the two different again for the two types uh, which includes uh, shed, uh, um, contact pin printing and uh, proximity printing proximity as I showed you earlier okay so these are the different techniques of exposure method next we have the exposure performance how we can uh, find the performance that how accurate is our uh, way of making the solar cell uh, it depends on three different parameter resolution registration and the throughput resolution is the minimum uh, uh, feature size and registration is the how accurately patterns on a system mask so sometimes uh, we deposit the uh, to if I give you uh, to our solar cells simple diodes we required at least 14 to 16 expo, uh, 14 to 16 lithographic steps are involved to make a simple uh, IC okay to make a simple IC I'm um, obviously in solar cells it reduces to much lesser uh, 
a number of lithographic process uh, maybe up to you can say eight nine or ten lithographic process are involved but uh, to fabricate an IC integral circuits, uh, usually we required 14 to 16 steps are involved for, for a simple kind of device. And if this device uh, gets complicated, it uh, uh, the steps, uh, uh, the number of steps of lithographic process increases. So that is why registration is another important parameter that uh, when we have used for the first time mask, how accurately it aligns with the previous mask. So that is why registration is one of the uh, ef uh, efficiency uh, deciding parameters. Next is the throughput. Throughput is the uh, ex uh, wafer exposed per hour how much wafers we are producing or how much solar cells we are producing per hour because we have to we are uh, obviously we know that uh, if we are dealing with the bulk production so in a bulk production uh, the device uh, becomes more uh, economical as compared to the solar production so that is why we are more interested in the throughput of the system Next are the masks. Masks are the glass uh, made up of two different type of uh, masks are available, soft materials and hard materials. Um, so in soft masks are uh, based on the emulsions and hard masks they are based on the chromium and iron oxides. So these are the uh, uh, categorized masks into a soft uh, mask and hard mask. So uh, these are very simple, okay. Uh, hard mask usually based on chromium and iron oxide. Next we have the photoresist. Photoresists uh, are also of two types, positive photoresist, negative photoresist. Positive photoresist produces the same image while negative photoresist produces the mirror image as you can see in this uh, graph. Um, here you can, here we have the positive photoresist which produces the uh, uh, image as it is and in the negative photoresist we have the uh, mirror image of the our pattern so these are the photoresist uh, there is also um, many details but I don't I think we are running out of time so I don't go into that detail okay uh, then we have the etching process, wet etching and dry etching uh, is the way how we can remove those developed areas of photoresist. Photoresist can be put into uh, some chemical solutions which uh, removes the soft part when because photoresist is a that kind of material which uh, becomes hard when it is exposed to light and become uh, remain soft when it is not exposed to light. So when we put into the etching solution, the soft material gets removed and hot material will remain as it is. So by this way, we created the window on the uh, in a silicon wafer. And then after that, we can perform any kind of function in that window, uh, whether we want to dope it, okay, or whether we can uh, want to do some kind of metallization. So by this way, we can perform this etching process. Next is the wet etching. Uh, wet etching is another uh, two different type of etching. Anisotropic and isotropic. That's it. Then dry etching. There is a plasma etching. Uh, different. I think. Then I would like to give you a comparison of these uh, different techniques of the. Uh, Photolithography, uh, photolithography, electron beam, X-ray, and ion beam with respect to resolution, registration, and throughput. Second generation solar cells. Uh, so here now we, I would like to discuss the second generation solar cells. The second generation solar cells inclu includes the thin film solar cells. Okay, and uh, the process or the techniques which it follows are the electrodeposition, chemical reduction, electrolysis, vapor plating, evaporation, sputtering, anodization, and polymerization. These are a long list of depositing techniques. 
uh, why we called it uh, thin film solar cells and here at GIK at a graduate level I also offer this thin film uh, technology course in the at the graduate level and people uh, we all discuss all these uh, and deposition techniques uh, in that course um, so in thin film solar cells usually uh, this ID comes with the development um, development of thin film technology uh, why it is more popular because thin films provide you the advantage uh, if I have uh, one mil of uh, copper wire so and one mil of thin film of copper so that one mil of thin film of copper has 500 times more resistance as compared to the copper wire so that is why thin films are more important uh, because by this way we have reduced the weight we have reduced the material consumption and uh, at the same time uh, it becomes more uh, lighter and more economical process it becomes so that is why these solar cells are more popular as compared to the silicon uh, technology and uh, I don't go into the detail of this electro deposition uh, techniques uh, uh, but uh, I would like to tell you about that the most popular techniques among all these are the evaporation and the sputtering these are the most popular techniques of thin film deposition of the solar cells so this is the second generation of solar cells mm, uh, Next is the organic semiconductor solar cells, which is the third generation. And this process is called, uh, which they follow, is the hybrid uh, uh, technique. Mean it also uses the technique of first generation, and it also uses the technique of second generation. Though they, pro they these solar cells can be made up of with the hybrid, uh, uh, with the hybrid technique. So organic solar cells, uh, uh, in organic solar cell technology, uh, as I discussed uh, earlier, that uh, later on people also called a fourth generation. So for example, dye sensify they called fourth generation. And these perovskites they called the fifth generation solar cells. So, but uh, uh, I don't think that uh, these are the generation, but they are included into this third generation they can be covered by this third generation but still we have the third generation of the super same this is a correction but uh, sometimes people become very excited and they want to <laughs> uh, and they are in a race that they want to denounce the uh, yes this is the uh, one step further and they call it third generation fourth generation fifth generations but the things are uh, the reality is a bit different as I told you earlier. So, and people are also in, um, investigating thermoelectric solar cells where they are uh, focusing on the thermal uh, properties of the solar cells because in sunlight we have a very wide range of the, those thermal radiations in the sunlight. So, and uh, then there are also hydrophilic materials. Hydrophilic materials are those materials uh, which generate electricity during the cloudy weather. So, this is if we I will talk about that, uh, what we can, how we can uh, produce light if photovoltaic is the alternate of the great uh, technology, then what would happen at night or what would happen in a cloudy day? So now people are thinking that those um, can, uh, thinking about these hydrophilic materials which can generate electricity during the cloudy weather or during the night. So um, give you a brief uh, uh, introduction of these uh, organic semiconductor materials. These are the different classes or groups of material which include celluloids, dip materials based on dye and dyno based on perylin, PTCDA. This is another class of materials, organic semiconductor, which includes perylin derivatives, 
then we have the oligocenes, anthocenes, uh, tetracenes, petrocenes, all these uh, class of materials are into uh, oligocenes. So diff these are the different classes of materials. Then we have, uh, these are the most popular materials or uh, you uh, can say these are the materials on which I have worked uh, during uh, and currently I am working uh, to fabricate uh, different kind of solar cells and the electronic devices. Uh, so these include PPV, PFO, PCAT, cellocinin, C63, ALK3 and pentocene. These are the most popular cellocinins are currently very popular in making the solar cell devices. Uh, then there are another class uh, people are uh, carbon nanotubes are the another uh, very popular material. Uh, the advantages of using why we prefer to use these uh, third generation solar cells. Uh, in comparison to, to the first generation and second generation is because of the low cost, uh, simple technology, lightweight, versatile material selection and low temperature possible. This actually this is the property which makes it more attractive because uh, the technique which we use to fabricate the solar cell is a very energy consuming. In the first and second generation solar cells, those techniques are very energy consuming, power consuming. And when we use more power, it means that uh, the uh, device cost increases. So uh, to reduce the uh, device cost uh, in organic solar cells, uh, we have a very economical or cheaper way of making those uh, organic solar cells. Uh, but at the same time, it's they are the lightweight and we have a number of materials are available for the fabrication of those solar cells. Um, device uh, fabrication from organic materials uh, currently in the market you can see these OLEDs organic light emitting most popular devices which we can uh, which is practically available in the market and uh, we are using uh, we are already using these devices uh, field effect transistors in your touch screen of your mobiles can be based on these uh, sensors, uh, solar cells, RFID tags, memory cells, organic displays. So uh, these uh, all devices are in the available in the market. Um, uh, as you can see from the graph, these are the different groups. And uh, uh, here you can see this is a transparent uh, uh, display of the mobile. So we can make the transparent solar uh, cell devices also from the organic material. Uh, then the fabrication technique point of view, we uh, can fabricate the uh, organic solar cells based on vacuum thermal air pressure, spin coating, drop costing methods, sputting, inject plating, and electron beam. Uh, and if I give you, um, my example that uh, in, at JAK Institute, we have the, this technique, we have this uh, spin coating process, we have the drop costing method, we have the sputtering setup over here. And uh, now I am developing this uh, inject protein and I have uh, one project from the HEC, uh, uh, NRPU project uh, where uh, we have a, uh, 10 million plants ground from HEC and we are trying to develop this inject printing setup uh, at GIK Institute. And inshallah soon we will be able to develop this technique and uh, then we will be able to. I mean, it's, it's a very interesting technique. We can uh, uh, fabricate solar cell just by printing. The way we print uh, our uh, papers, uh, by this way we can print the solar cells. So it, then it would become very interesting and very efficient that uh, uh, we can fabricate uh, uh, solar cells very quickly and very efficiently. Uh, so these are the fabrication techniques of uh, uh, fabricating organic uh, uh, solar cells. and. Uh, uh, and that is why they, they are become more attractive and more uh, economical uh, by because of these techniques. Uh, so next is the fabrication process is very simple. If I give a simplest example, if I give, we have the glass substrate, then we have a mass, 
uh, then we have the export preparation and then we deposit the organic uh, film on the those substrate so by this way we can fabricate the organic solar cells this is a simple uh, surface type structure if we use the um, uh, sandwich type structure then it becomes a bit complicated but uh, that can also be uh, deposit uh, at the agency and we are depositing uh, from the characterization point of view solar cells can be characterized on the basis of IV characteristics is one of the most important technique of um, uh, making those solar cells um, it's IV characteristics uh, that uh, and it actually defines it's uh, the efficiency of the solar cell so this can be done through solar simu uh, simulator and this can also be done uh, by using digital multimeter so um, here at the end, so we both have these uh, methods are available um, if I show in this graph, uh, you can see that uh, we have voltage versus current graph, uh, and here you can see it is written uh, maximum power point. Actually, this graph is drawn uh, as a uh, the graph which I have drawn. This is uh, we are using. It shows you the the first quadrant of the graph. But uh, uh, as I told you earlier, that uh, to in solar cells. We use the, this fourth quadrant. Okay, so this is just for the understanding purpose. We just flip it like this, and then it becomes like this. So this is just for the understand, but actually it is the fourth quadrant of the this graph. So and this is the maximum power point. Okay. Uh, we called it where we can maximum energy in a maximum power from the solar cell um, and uh, if you want to increase the power in terms of voltage um, then you can increase the uh, series resistance of the solar cell series combination of the solar and if you want to increase the current of uh, 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 current of the your photovoltaic system then you can increase the parallel combination of the solar cells so this is a very important point that uh, uh, sometimes uh, people will ask you that what is the uh, way to increase the current of the solar cells what is the way to increase the voltage of the solar cell if they ask you the voltage then you can say we can increase the series combination and if they ask you about the current then you can say we can you to increase the parallel combination of the solar cells so this is another uh, important slide and then we have the diverse field uses of the solar cell and um, future from the future point of view as i told you that uh, through organic semiconductor we can uh, fabricate some transparent solar cells so that you can and actually we have built uh, these uh, thin film semi-transparent thermoelectric solar cells um, so uh, and we got the transparency of up to uh, you can say 30 percent um, but uh, people are, uh, have achieved uh, much more transparency up to 70 60 70 percent so uh, it opens up a very broad area of uh, from the application point of view that uh, if your window is uh, painted with some material and you, the same time it is serving the purpose of the your window and at the same time it is also producing the energies uh, also interesting the uh, voltage and current of uh, power of for your uh, for your home and uh, recently I was uh, uh, saw a video on uh, I think on Facebook or YouTube that where uh, you know that nowadays uh, these Tesla cars are become very popular and one of the main disadvantage of that Tesla car uh, because these, these are the electric vehicles and uh, the disadvantage that they took a 15 minute take a 5, 15 minute uh, to charge to fully charge their solar car uh, to uh, do those electric cars so 15 minutes is a very huge time 
nobody if you are going on a motorway and then you have to stop and charge your car for 15 minutes it becomes quite cumbersome uh, nobody wants to wait for 15 minutes and they want to reduce the charging time of their electric vehicle so one possible solutions which they they were thinking that uh, why not make it uh, deposit or paint their uh, tesla cars with that kind of material which can generate electricity so which can which can ultimately charge their reduce their charging time obviously by this way they cannot fully charge their uh, electric vehicles but they can reduce their charging time so uh, if their uh, window she uh, window glass are made of those uh, uh, those uh, solar cells uh, those organic materials or their uh, uh, body is made up of uh, those uh, uh, solar material so by this way they can reduce the charging time up to five meter that becomes very attractive uh, from this usage point of view and then uh, there are another type of uh, material uh, application is the friction heat generated solar cells so those cell solar cells which can generate electricity by using the friction of the uh, tiles or from the friction of uh, from the friction of tiles or from the friction of another uh, some rubbing materials so by this way they, they, there are different applications uh, um, which can be uh, uh, in which uh, we can use the solar cells so these are some of the references which I have used. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. I think uh, uh, I took 10 to 15 minutes more um, because I have actually I have planned to finish it up up to 12. Um, but thanks for your patience and thanks for giving me the opportunity to present over here. Uh, it was a very nice uh, interaction with you guys. Um, now I'm open for any kind of questions, queries, comments, suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. The pleasure was all ours. Now uh, the floor is open to questions. So if uh, any of our participants would like to ask anything, you can raise your hand, and the host will unmute you. Apart from that, if you would like, you can also use the chat forum. Do we have any questions from the audience? No question inside. Okay. Okay. Anybody? Anybody can ask. I can see here. Temur, half is Temur. You are here. Good. You may ask any question. Okay. Some of our participants have expressed some very, uh, you can say, appreciative comments about your session, sir. It was indeed very Hello, informative. Yes. Yeah. Oh, um, do you have any question? Yes, sir. I have any go one question. Yes, sir, sir, how can we differentiate different layers in solar cells, like whole transport layer and light light absorbers, and similarly, whole conducting layers? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Tremor, uh, we can differentiate because, uh, as I told you, before, there are two ways to make uh, a solar cell, a sandwich type and a surface type. So usually in sandwich okay. type, uh, uh, we know that what kind of layer we are depositing and this can be decided not by, uh, there is no any physical mechanism uh, available. It actually depends on the energy band diagram. So you can decide this thing that uh, which layer is a whole transporting layer and which layer is a electron transporting layer. There is no any physical mechanism. So you can decide this thing through the energy band diagram and uh, the other, uh, uh, the one way, which uh, the physical way of uh, deciding this parameter is the, uh, the direction of current flow, okay? So in which direction current is flowing it depends on that thing and then the second thing which uh, uh, 
imposes or which decide this thing is the energy band diagram okay how what kind of energy band diagram you are making so actually you can decide from there and the direction of current flow that uh, which layer is a electron transporting layer and which layer is a hole transporting layer okay sir and one more question is that yes. which parameters are important like efficiency fill factors gsc and open circuit voltage oh. which circuit uh, which parameter is important all more important parameters. more important yes sir. all these parameters are one of the most important parameters to characterize the solar cell is the uh, open circuit voltage and short circuit current you must have to if you made a solar cell then you must have uh, know these two yes. parameters open circuit voltage and short circuit current that's it these are the first initial basic okay, uh, characterization parameters which you should know and the rest of the things are also important so you can also calculate then uh, these other parameters also from these two parameters okay okay sir thank you sir and, thank you very uh, much for your question uh, we have another question from mr shoaib and madanyo uh, can you please unmute him Yes, sir. You can now ask your question. Sir, it seems uh, we cannot hear you. Uh, Just your sound system. I can't hear them. Okay. Uh, it seems that uh, Mr. Shoaib was having some issues with his sound system, which is why he cannot ask his question. Uh, do we have any more questions from the audience? Yes, uh, we have a question from Mr. Ashad. Host, can you please unmute him? Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so first of all, I uh, very much thank you for such knowledgeable. I have been enlightened by such a webinar. Uh, I haven't uh, taken such in the past few weeks. Uh, my question is, uh, if talking about uh, in terms of a lithography, so what kind of mask should we use uh, for masking, and what uh, type of material should we use for it? If we are using, uh, if uh, as you have said earlier, uh, later that uh, it could create a some type of constriction in the, uh, while transmitting the electric current. So, what type of material should we use while masking? Uh, yes, mask. uh mask can be of two types uh, these are the soft mask and hard mask and when how we categorize these soft mask and hard mask soft materials uh, or those materials uh, um here i can show you but uh, those mask are available in my lab otherwise i can show you that these are the mask and uh, uh, how we can create them so uh, i okay i will try to just explain um soft mask are made up of emulsion just simple emulsion as you can emulsion emulsion is a paint okay so you can make the mask through those emulsion obviously they required uh, some specific uh, printer which can print up to micro scale level uh, and uh, if i give you the jugad of this thing and what usually how we can do because these um, uh, mask printing setups are available in the uh, international level um, but here what we can as a jugad what we can do we can uh, you can also print uh, if you use the coral draw in those coral draws we can create uh, the micro scale level of uh, uh, diagrams in the coral draw uh, this is the way and then you print it uh, with a very high uh, density level of your uh, printer by this way this also serves as an emulsion of for the mask so this is the one way of creating that uh, soft mask and hard mask can be cre uh, created by using the material which are chromium oxide and iron oxide these are the material we which we uh, deposit on the glass slide so by uh, those and by this way we call them as a hard mask chromium and iron oxide so uh, yes uh, i can show you these uh, but 
those masks are available in my lab and i can show you probably some other time or if you have uh, chance to visit gik and i will show you that how these masks can be created and i will show you this whole lithography setup i hope so answers the questions and the next part yes uh, you also about asked about the